All right, guys, I'm trying out these tank bags for the first time. I've got my jacket bungeed on the back. It's muggy as hell. Let's see how this works. Wish me luck. And basically, I'm going to go pick up Mike, meet up with him. We are going to head to the Hatfield-McCoy Trailhead. Uh, it's about 20 miles here on the road on these dual sports. And uh, then we're going to try to hit some trails. And this will be my first uh, real ride on trails on this DR650. I've done a lot of road. I've done a lot of gravel road. I've done some dirt road. But I've never done anything too extreme on it. So we're going to kind of get an idea of what it can do today. I've got the drone with me. I'm gonna try to get some drone shots. I'm all obviously I'm GoPro and mic'd up, so we should be able to tell a cool story today. Haha, <laughs> old school electric start. Alright guys, so I've had a major dilemma here. I've been itching to get a new bike for a while. And I, if I'm going to get something new, I want it to be a modern bike. I want uh, Some of the things I want are EFI, uh, maybe like a parallel twin. I want long maintenance intervals. I want something that just feels fresh and modern and breeds confidence sleek you know just something cool i've already been down the klr route i've got the dr i've got nice trail bikes and it really doesn't matter how nice and new your trail bike is so i really think i would like to get something that will spend a lot of its life on the road especially if i'm going to have to finance it and keep it for a while uh, if i get something new it's going to have to last me a while so if i ride it on the road uh you know, it, it won't be near as hard on it. But I basically need to be able to double up. And I also need to be able to carry some luggage. And I need to be able to travel on the highway without uh, it being too stressful on me or the bike. And from everything I've researched, from everything I've researched, that leads me to two options. The Africa Twin the CRF 1000L Africa Twin or the um, KTM 690R and basically the Africa Twin looking around uh, 12 to 14,000 uh, you cannot find these used yet really they just came out in 2016 um, can't, can't find them used if you do find them used they're still 9,000 so that's not really a possible route it would have to be financed and the KTM 1090R, which also seems to be impossible to find used in my area. And, uh, hell, it's 14.5 14 or 14.9 brand new. And, I mean, even if you find one of those used, you're probably going to pay ten or 12000 So it's like, whew, either one of these is going to have to have to be financed and financed for a long time. And, uh, man, I just, I've been pouring over YouTube videos. I've been reading reviews. And uh, this, either of these would really be the perfect setup for me because they should. I spend most of my time on gravel roads, and they should be able to crush gravel roads with the right knobby setup from everything I've read. Now, here's my dilemma. I don't know anybody with an Africa Twin, so I can even test the ergos, much less ride one. 
I don't have any good relationships with any Honda shops. I do have a great relationship with a KTM shop who will actually let me demo a KTM 1090R. But I've never, I've, I've always been super leery about KTM reliability and longevity. Everybody knows the parts cost a little more. There'll be a le even less than I, that I can work on myself than I can with the CRF. Everybody is, you know, everybody understands Honda's reliability and longevity. That's, that's uh, relatively never in question. But, I don't know. You know, I'd, I really like to buy a KTM just because I like the, like the local shop here that I deal with. But, um, I don't know. If you're going to keep a bike for 15 or 20 years, you need to get what you want. So, I don't know, man. It's a scary thought. Um, I think both of these would do the job. I've seen guys ride the Africa Twin and the 1092 up, no problem. And some of the dirt that the guys are hitting on the 1090s, I don't know if the Africa Twin's quite as capable in the dirt, but man, some of the places they're taking those 1090s, I really wouldn't even want to take a regular dirt bike. So that's, that's pretty crazy. I don't know, man. I'm still torn. I'm going to try to meet up with somebody, go sit on, sit on them, go... Maybe grab that 1090R demo and ride it for a couple days and see. But uh, I am going to pull the trigger on something soon. Um, what do you guys think? Anybody have any uh, suggestions or anything? All right, so we're coming up here. We're about to pop out on the highway. And uh, we'll have to head up the highway like, I don't know, six or seven miles. And that should put us at the trailhead. All right, guys, here we are entering the trails. And sorry I had to voice this over. I had microphone problems that day. My dead cat had came off the end of my microphone. It was like every little wind, every little piece of wind was like ruining my audio. And then it actually came unplugged for a little while. It was an absolute pain. But uh, yeah, still had a great day of riding. Basically, as soon as we got in here, I knew, I, I didn't realize how much of a challenge this was going to be. Uh, basically, I was on trails that on a regular dirt bike would have been no sweat for me at all. Would have been borderline boring. But because I was on a bigger, cumbersome bike with uh, with more luggage and stuff attached, it made it kind of like a fun challenge. I, I don't know. It, like, it was challenging and fun to go way slower. Uh, I guess because of the consequences and just because of the skill it, it took to get this bigger, heavier bike with these uh, more road-oriented tires through these same sections. So basically the situation was it had rained a couple days before. We didn't realize it had rained that much up there. And here I am, never ran this tank bag before. I've got my backpack bungeed on the back of my, uh, on my rest on the back. I've got a $1,200 Mavic Pro drone on the back with extra batteries, an iPad, all my GoPro accessories. I mean, I probably had like sixteen to $1,800 of luggage. And I'm basically going through these coal sludge ponds. And if I fall over, good chance that some of that's going to get ruined. So it really upped the stakes. I really had to make sure I stayed upright. And, uh, you know, besides the mud, it really wasn't a huge issue. The... But I followed Mike, and we took our time, and we were able to navigate through most of this okay, as you see. We stopped up here and got some sweet drone shots. Mm -hmm. 